world leaders panic. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, a shocking report reveals global leaders are secretly preparing for economic Armageddon. We'll show you the report and what they're doing and why one major country is preparing for the worst. Now let's head over to Bloomberg where we pick today's story up with a headline of central banking on gold's geopolitical upside. And when governments panic, particularly central banks, there's one thing they turn to and it's gold. And as you're about to see, they're turning to it in a big way because they know their policies aren't working. The price of gold reached an all-time high in April despite higher U.S. interest rates. And then we're going to show that central banks are driving the increase in gold demand since mid-2022. And that's how far back they were looking when they knew their policy might not work and that new geopolitical or financial shocks may push gold prices significantly higher. And here you can see the price of gold reached an all-time high on April 19th of nearly 2400 an ounce, despite sharp increases in U.S. interest rates and the dollar over the past three years. And when you see a rally in the dollar and you see higher interest rates, typically investors shift their focus from gold over to yield. And in this case, they're not. They actually are starting to believe that governments could fail, central banks could fail, and that policy here is not working at all. What do you think? Way in the comments, love to know what you think. If you're buying gold, what are you doing it for? Is this the piece we focus on central banks? Because the tripling of their gold purchases to about 10 million troy ounces per quarter since mid-2022 is a key feature of the unshakable bull market. So as far back as now almost two years ago, central bankers were starting to realize that the path they were on may not work. But the challenge here is they were committed to it. They had no choice but to follow it, but as a hedge, as a means of protection, well, they bought gold. And in a big way, and here you can see central banks turned into net buyers after the global financial crisis and their purchases have tripled again since mid 2022. But I want to point back to following the dot com bubble and going into the global financial crisis. They were indeed net sellers and there may be a very good reason they're loading up on gold now is perhaps they plan to be big sellers in the future. We first show that central bank purchases fully explain the increase in gold demand since the second half of 2022 as jewelry demand has remained stable. But this will come to a surprise to many people. Investment demand has actually fallen. So that big rally in gold, well, most investors missed out on it because it's all about central banks. What you're seeing here is investors would rather chase a magnificent seven higher than be in gold. And we then model central bank gold purchases is based on measures of fear of geopolitical or financial shocks and we finally estimate the potential future of significant boost to gold prices from new geopolitical or financial stock stocks via increased central bank buying and something that actually fully explains the demand and growth in people's trading accounts, investment portfolios has everything to do with the fact that we have out standing win rates on our reports here you can see you don't have to be an expert on trading you don't have to be an expert on market cycles it doesn't matter markets going up down you want commodity stocks bonds we've got it all even foreign stuff looking back over two months if you would have bought every original trade each week that our reports recommended you would be up 83% on our CTA Timer Pro, 86% win rate on Momentum Timer Pro. That is incredible. Even professional traders barely have a win rate of 50%, and you can actually change the tide in your investing and trading accounts. How do we do that with our CTA Timer Pro? This looks like the machine positions. We show you how to buy before they do. When they're in deep, short positions, we tell you this is how you want to buy it. We give you the report. We show you signals. We back it with a video. Maybe you're a technical trader, but you find yourself getting in late and out early and bouncing all over the place. Well, we take all those signals, aggregate them together, add a proprietary overlay. We give you the signals and a video to back that up. Again, it doesn't matter if you're professional or new to trading. It doesn't matter what the cycles are. We've got the reports and here's the best part. While all my friends charge you to try their reports out, 
he give you 30 days for free. Check out the links in the description. Be sure to use the coupon codes as emerging market central banks are driving the gold rush. Now, why would that be? Why would we see emerging markets really focus on buying gold? Will currency disasters destroy global economies and global problems come out of that? And this is something they're hedging against as a rise of unreported purchases. This is key. They're secretly purchasing, fully explains the tripling in gold central bank demand since mid-2022, while reported purchases have been stable. So they're not talking about buying gold, but they're buying it. And while most central bank gold buying is now unreported, six emerging market central banks, including China, which we'll focus on later, Poland, Turkey, Singapore, India, and Qatar, drive all of the reported net monetary purchases since mid-2022. In fact, the World Gold Council stated that global central banks purchased 9.3 million tons of gold on net in the first quarter of this year alone with only 0.8 million tons reported net purchases and the largest reported net purchase that alone by turkey and there's a reason why is china buying so much gold well they're preparing for the worst i'll show you why their economy is going to come crumbling down sooner than later there's a reason they need gold and in a big way now, we talk about central banks buying gold as a hedge against geopolitical and financial shocks. This is according to a survey, historical and statistical evidence gathered by Goldman. A 2023 World Gold Council survey found that 37 emerging markets responding central banks cited financial and geopolitical factors is key influence on their gold holdings. Think about this, maybe you get sanctioned, maybe there's not demand for your currency, but you need to get something. What do you have that everybody wants to buy and particularly likes to buy during financial crises? That is gold. There's always a market for it. This gives central banks liquidity. When everyone floods into gold, my fear now is they're gonna become massive sellers because they're gonna have to buy up all of their currency to keep it from collapsing to zero. The most cited relevant factors of holding gold are inflation hedging, performance during times of crises, and no default risk. And that's a big one because, of course, you can default on your denominated debt from other countries all day long. That if you've got physical gold, you can maybe pay those debts back. And on the financial front of geopolitical diversification, there's absolutely no political risk. Again, nobody's going to stop you from selling your gold. It might stop you from selling, of course, your dollars or other currency and sanction concerns. That's a big one that we see. Engaging gold's hedging value, this according to Goldman. They remain that it could appreciate to 2,700 per ounce by year end. That would be a 17% rally driven by strong demand from emerging market central banks, Asian households, and lower U.S. interest rates. Based on their model of central bank gold buying alone and their prior estimates for the price elasticity of gold supply and demand, we estimate upside to our base case of gold price forecast in those scenarios to 2700 but what do you think how high do you think gold's gonna go what are you expecting again way in the comments love to see it because we talk about china being one of the biggest countries in the world let's talk about largest export lar second largest economy and they're buying gold why because credit shrinks now for the first time as loan growth disappoints now keep in mind in a debt-based economy, you need to see a constant credit expansion. Why do you need that? Well, first, you need to pay on all of your debts, and that's why you need new money to be created to pay on those debts, and you need to hold those growth targets, and now is a problem. As they see, of course, credit demand going down, well, that means their economy is soon to follow. In aggregate financing, a broad measure of credit decreased by almost 200 billion yuan in April from the previous month. That's the first time this measure has declined since comparable data began back in 2017, reflecting a contraction in financing activity. It also is a reflection of a contracting economy. And there's another big factor here that I want you to understand why central banks or buying gold because they had to chase yields higher. They had to raise short-term interest rates. They had to tighten financial conditions because they put everything about not what the market was demanding for rates, but 
of course, inflation targets, which we know do not work at all. They realized that they were probably going to have to be too tight for too long, keep rates too far elevated. They're hedging this because they don't want to be in a position where we see central banks fail. And of course, if you've got gold and you can offload that during the next crisis, well, you'd be okay. As the volatility in this month's data is tolerable because the government will issue ultra-long government bonds soon in a hope to actually drive rates higher, if you can imagine that. So credit expansion in May and June may make up for it. What they're hoping is to drive long-term rates up and get people to borrow on the short term. But I want to understand that these central bankers do not understand how the bond market works here at all. The government has sold bonds at a slower than expected pace so far this year, helping fuel a rally in sovereign bonds as demand outpaces supply. And that's kind of the narrative here. Why would China's banks be buying bonds? Because they don't want to lend. But is it simply just a fact that their banks are buying bonds? What they don't understand is long-term bond yields signal growth and inflation expectations. And so what the bond market in China is saying, all the things you're doing, Beijing, are not working. The economy is indeed slow, and you see that in the credit data now. And this is dangerous for their economy. They can issue all the long-term bonds they want. It won't matter. The banks are still going to buy it because they would rather hold the safety and security of government bonds than lend money. And that is a key factor here. As the PBOC has emphasized, the market shouldn't look at the absolute growth rate of credit over the past few months. Well, why look at it? Because it tells you the economy is continuing to spiral down, citing reasons including improving structure of credit that allows emerging industries to get more financial support at a time. And what are we seeing these emerging industries doing? They're overproducing and dumping things on the global economy. You know, we went through a big shift here. We went from the problem that we had so much demand and not enough supply. And now what we're starting to see is demand is crumbling and supply is going up. More credit doesn't, at least not to the industry side, is going to fix that. In a report published Friday, the central bank said the slower credit expansion, well, that was still sufficient to support the economy. No matter what happens, they're going to spin it to be in a good way. But the reality is when you see a deceleration or even worse, a contraction in credit, if we're going to look at the U.S. data, I want to point out that while this happens, various times, most of them you see happening right where these gray shaded bars are. Those are recessions or as we see here in 2015 through 2016, where we nearly experienced a global synchronized recession. The economy slowed down and now China's credit is slowing down. Here in the U.S., it still remains negative, which means on net banks are, of course, destroying money. It also means that U.S. banks are doing the same thing China's banks are, and that is buying bonds. And why don't banks want to lend because they can't make money lending and they're afraid because of the economy that they're not going to get their money back. That's the biggest fear banks have. And when they're in that mode, well, they turn and buy treasuries of whatever government they're in. And new mid and long term goal loans to companies were smaller than the amount recorded a year ago, underlying poor investment demand. And it's not just that. Companies are looking and saying, why would I want to invest in expanding production? Because I already don't have enough demand for the production I can do now. The government's pushing me to produce to keep jobs, and I'm going to flood the global economy with these products that I don't even know I have buyers for. So in this case, there is no demand, and that's the issue here. That Beijing can't see, these companies have no reason to borrow money. And it's not just them, it's consumers in China too. They're saying, why would I borrow money? I'm not sure I'm going to have a job to pay this back. And at some point, American consumers in the near term are going to get to the same place. And what you normally see here is the fact that when you see a slowdown in lending, begin we talk about supply and demand, what the market tells you in a debt-based economy is contractions or decelerations and lending usually follow with decelerations or drop declines in treasury yields. But this time the market says no, and central bankers say not a chance. We need to keep rates up to kill inflation. Well, you've killed demand to the point where we're going to oversupply. And this is one of the few times where you see yields rising against decelerating and now contracting here in the U.S. loan demand. And what it's telling us and what Chinese China's economy, what the U.S. economy, what the global economy is screaming at central bankers and saying, look, 
Rates don't need to go up, they need to go down. You're killing the system. And rather than paying attention, what central bankers are doing is they're buying gold to hedge their own major mistake here. And here we can see in China, consumer inflation rises, but hang tight, it's not for the reasons you might think. But factory prices continue to drop. So even Beijing knows that, wait a minute, our economy is not turning around despite our best efforts as the consumer price index rose to 0.3% from a year earlier. And that that is compared to an increase of 0.1% in March. So we see a bit of an increase, but look at this. Factory gate prices remain stuck in deflation. So we talk about how the US exports inflation by sending dollars throughout the world. China exports deflation by sending cheap products all over the world. And right now they're sending a ton of them. And we talked about in the show the other day, people don't want them. Global leaders are saying, look, we don't want your stuff, China. We do want consumer prices to come down, but maybe not that much because it'll take jobs away. And here you can see, that they've been stuck in deflation since late 2022 with a producer price index now sliding two and a half percent in April from a year earlier. That is not a good sign. And here you can look at, of course, you talk about yields here again, and maybe why central bankers, they just can't cut rates. They can't stop what's coming. They know it's gonna be economic Armageddon. And here you have the producer price index, this from China. And you see when you decelerations or even contractions, what happens to yields in the US well, you notice the 10-year treasury yield in red goes down. And why does it go down? Well, it's very simple. It's to spur consumption because what the market is telling, what consumers are saying is, look, rates are too high. I need lower rates to spur consumption. And here again, we see this, China, we know, in deflation, exporting cheap products all over the world, yet the market and central bankers still are forced to hold rates higher. It's a dangerous move. It's going to have a disastrous outcome outcome and so their only answer not cut buy gold and some of the rise in consumer prices may be due to administrative decisions rather than any improvement in demand so even here we see in china it's not demand driven local governments have been increasing utility costs and train fares in recent months a move that could push the price index higher but leave households with less spending power for other purchases and of course that should be evident as they spend less on other purchases that means their discretionary spending declines just like we're seeing here in the u.s leads to less demand so there is a case where higher prices do lead to lower prices, look for more disinflation, perhaps more deflation coming on the consumer price index for China. Again, you talk about why they're buying gold. It makes perfect sense. They're even warning people on the risk of buying in the government bond rally, saying don't buy our debt, if you can imagine that. The People's Bank of China said long-term government bond yields will better match the future economy's improving trend which is no evidence of that. And that's the whole point here. They can't stop the fact that the bond market is saying growth and inflation expectations are coming down. You can issue all the debt you want, but no, the PBOC says don't do that. Bond market supply and demand because they believe that's what it is will likely become more balanced as they look to issue more long-term debt. They cited, of course, factors including accelerating issuance, here you go, of sovereign bonds. And the PBOC reaffirmed it'll keep the yuan basically stable at a reasonable equilibrium level and vowed it will resolutely prevent currency over adjustment. It also tried to assuage concerns over the country's slowing credit growth, saying it's still sufficient to support the economy. The reality is they're gonna at some point need to sell gold. You know what they're gonna be buying? That's right, they're gonna be buying yuan. You watch and see, because even investors want out of China, and this has everything to do with the fact the Fed's got rates so much higher than everyone else is foreign investment in China slumps 56% in the first quarter. Look, they know their economy is headed down as direct investment liabilities and its balance of payments stood about 10.3 billion in the first three months of the year. The figure is a whopping 56% lower than the same period a year earlier. And that comes after revised data showing it falling to the lowest since early 2000s. And of course, this is the red flag in China. Foreign, foreign investment doesn't want to go there. They can earn higher rates elsewhere without the risk. That is a problem. Same money is going to flow out of China. This is why they're buying gold. The data also showed the current account surplus fell to its lowest since the start of the pandemic. But see this, driven by a smaller surplus in goods and continued 
deficits in services. Why is that? Because demand for their products is weakening. The global economy is weakening. And rather than do the right thing, central bankers, as you now see, have put the global economy into the midst, right into the firing line of economic Armageddon. And rather than cut rates because they're worried about inflation, well, they're buying gold so they can buy all their currency back. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.